welcome to the final video. Here we will end our short exploration of Irish families, place names and miscellanea with a trek across Ireland's western province of Connacht, the smallest but by no means the least of Ireland's provinces. The old Gaelic kingdom of Connacht once stretched to include parts of North Leinster and West Ulster. Today it is divided into the five counties of Roscommon, Sligo, Leitrim, Mayo and Galway. It was once the hereditary home of the potent Connachta tribes, who established their main seat of power at Cruachan, known today as Rath Crogan or Cruachan's fortress in County Roscommon, and it is from these Connachta tribes that the province draws its name. Branches of Connachta tribes went on to produce great Irish noble dynasties and many high kings of Ireland. Of note, there are the O'Neill, the O'Neill clan, the O'Connover, the O'Connors, the O'Brien, or O'Briens, descendants of the great king Brian Baru, the Ophiacric, the Ophiacri, and the Uelil. The latter three of these comprise what are known together as Natura Conacta, or the Three Conactas. So let's begin our final chapter in the place that these great families once held as their dynastic centre of power, County Roscommon. Its current name originates around the year 550 AD with St. Colman MacPhailchon, a student of the monastery at Clonard in County Mead, himself a member of these Connachta tribes. He founded a monastery in the woods on the banks of the river Suk and lent his own name to the place, Ross Colman or Colman's Wood, in 1253. A Dominican friary was later established on the same site by the king of Connacht, Phelan O'Connor, the ruins of which can still be seen to this day. It had a notably calamitous history, suffering damage from both fire in 1270 and lightning in 1308. The MacDermid clan, or the MacDermida, were one of Roscommon's and indeed one of all Connacht's principal families who had their hereditary seat of power at the once existing King of My Lord between the 10th to the 16th centuries. An old poem speaks of families such as the MacYoke or the MacYoes, the MacReavy, the MacReavies, and MacMowan or MacMain as being prominent rulers of Moylorg in the times before the MacDermots. Still, during the height of their power, the MacDermots were the hereditary marshals of Connacht, had a duty to raise military forces, and to attend the inaugurations of the hereditary high kings, the O'Connors, which goes some way to explaining the origin of their family name. They are the sons of Diarmid, from Dia meaning God and Ermid meaning of arms, signifying a great warrior. Ruins of an 18th century MacDermid castle can still be seen on an island on Loch Key. From the 9th until the 13th centuries, the areas now known as Leitrim and Cavan once made up part of the Aurur Kingdom of Breffney, while the MacRannals, or the Reynolds, were chiefs of lands across Mohill and Leitrim. In the district of Rosclaher, the principal family was the O'Murrays, who had their family seat in High Mura, and whose descendants, the MacMurray, were chiefs at Loch Moelta. And in Daltry, we had the MacLancys, who were lords of this area at the time of the Norman invasions. Under the Anglo Norman invasions, Galway was an important stronghold for English rule in Connacht. It was governed by the descendants of William de Burgo, or Burke, whose son, Richard de Burgo, captured Dune von Nagolava in 1232. From then on, the site began to develop and prosper as a busy maritime port. Eventually, some branches of the Burgo family broke away and gave up their own customs in favour of the language, laws, dress and manners of the native Irish, who become Nis Gialli Na Na Gael Fain, more Irish than the Irish themselves. Fearing threat from the Gaelic families, a group of merchant elites of 14 powerful Galway families, 12 Norman and 2 Irish, known as the Galway tribes, received permission by Royal Charter of 1369 to make Galway a walled city to exclude the native Irish from entering. It is these tribes that gave Galway its nickname, Coha Nadriv, or City of the Tribes. The 14 families making up the tribes were Athy, Blake, Bodkin, Brown, Darcy, Dean, Font, French, Joyce, Kirwan, Lynch, Martin, Morris and Skerritt. Within 200 years, not much had changed. A city bylaw of 1562 explicitly banned 
prevented the virus from entering the city, stating, quote, neither O nor Mac shall strut nor swagger through the streets of Galway without permission, end quote. These laws of segregation set the native Irish apart from those living in the city, treating them as uncivilized and devoid of culture. Today, however, Galway tells a different story. As Ireland's third largest city, it is also a significant centre for the Irish language, arts, heritage, customs, traditional music and dance. Situated on the western Atlantic coast, in the north of the province, County Sligo derives its name, Sligoch, meaning Shelley, from the main river, its nearby estuary, and surrounding areas after their large deposits of shellfish. In earlier times, the boundaries of the great northern kingdom of Tyrconnell, or Donegal, once extended much further south to include parts of what is today northern Sligo. Upon the Anglo-Norman invasions of the Kingdom of Connacht, Maurice Fitzgerald, then Lord Justice of Ireland, established a castle on the site of the town in 1245, and later built a Dominican Abbey in 1253, and the town subsequently began to develop. The annals record the strength of the McGarity clan, with an entry from the year 1278 AD stating that a McGarity was then chieftain of the Shiel Murray, a large confederacy of loosely related families and kin groups, and whose clan settled in parts of what are now County Sligo and Mayo, having been dispossessed of their wider territories with the coming of the Anglo-Normans. A testament to this family's legacy could still be found off the coast of Sligo with the island of Inish Murray, named for this same great chieftain who once led their entire people. During the 15th to the 17th centuries, Parts of southwest Mayo and most of Ireland's western coastal waters were ruled by the powerful O'Malley or O'Malley clan, reaching its height under the lead of the great pirate queen, the celebrated Grania Whale or Grace O'Malley. Grania was a powerful and clever female leader who could both dominate the waves of the sea and expertly navigate the intricacies of the political world. She used her guile, her wit, and femininity as tools on her mission to secure clan wealth and prestige. From the Norman families, the Burks were, once again, strong in County Mayo. In time, Grania Whale would come to marry Richard Iron Dick Burke as a move to ferment her political power. Once the first year of the marriage was up, Grace was famously said to have summoned her entourage to Burke's Rockfleet Castle, a Norman tower house close to Newport in County Mayo, and from the rooftop cried to Richard, saying, Iron Dick, I dismiss you. Thus, she divorced him under the customs of Breton law, and she took possession of the stronghold for herself. And that brings us to the end of our fourth video. But this is just a cursory look at some of the key families and place names. There is a lot more we could go into, and I urge you to do your own research on this. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to hit subscribe and the notification bell so you'll be the first to hear the next time I upload a video. Son Aldous Gora Mahogan. Goodbye and thanks. Mm -hmm.